And joining us now to discuss this and other issues happening with the war is U.S. Ambassador, former U.S. Ambassador to Denmark, currently a U.S. Senate candidate for Pennsylvania, Carla Sands. Ambassador, it's great to have you with us today. Great to be with you. Uh, Ambassador, we wanted to start and get your reaction to uh, Lindsey Graham's call to assassinate Vladimir Putin. Obviously, no love lost for Vladimir Putin. He's assassinated a few people himself. But to hear a U.S. senator make this and to do it on Twitter, you know, some people are calling for Graham to take down the tweet. What do you think about it? I think you have to be aware that there are unintended consequences that happen with these kinds of actions. Look at when Hillary Clinton took out Gaddafi and what happened, the destabilization in the in the area. Of course, we don't we don't do this. What I will say is that this all happened because of Joe Biden, because of his feckless leadership, because Putin saw him with a stroke of a pen kill our Keystone XL pipeline, which he can replace with a a stroke of a pen, and then green light soon after that Russian gas pipeline, which my team and I were able to block the entire time I was serving in the Trump administration as your ambassador to Denmark. We were able to block it. We need to have American energy. Absolutely. We need, I would say, Operation Warp Speed and grow American domestic energy so that we're energy dominant once more, like we were under President Trump. What we need to do is work at the federal level and the state level and harmonize our regulations, harmonize our permitting process, and just grow our very cleanly harvested energy. It's much cleaner here in the United States than anywhere else, whether it's Saudi Arabia or Russia. And also, we need to build the pipelines to move the energy throughout our country and also to our coasts so that we can sell energy to our allies and partners so they're less dependent on Putin's energy. New England is heating their homes today with Russian gas. It can't continue. We have to have energy from 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 America. We have more here than anywhere. Ambassador, you just gave me a flashback. Uh, I don't know. I just thought of this, you know, the whole Greenland incident, you know, that that's the type of forward thinking that you guys were were talking about. Obviously, energy rich would have sent a strong message to Vladimir Putin as well. Uh, But those days are at least gone for now. But anyway, I, I digress. Uh, we do want to talk no, to you of course. Yeah. Uh, about China. Uh, China today, Ambassador, is saying it is seriously concerned about the nuclear, uh, sa- the safety and security of nuclear facilities in Ukraine. And in fact, the Wall Street Journal also reporting today that we're already sort of seeing the limits of that China and Russia no limits friendship. Um, and they're also saying the Ukraine war is really threatening to undo Beijing's year long effort to become a world leader. Did Putin miscalculate? Did she miscalculate, Ambassador? Well, we know that we know that this is not a good alliance, but they have been doing military exercises together. You know that we have a lot of viewers in Pennsylvania, and for those viewers in Pennsylvania, they can go to my website, carlasands.com. I'd love to have them join us. I need their help. I'm I'm in a statistical tie for first place in this Senate race in Pennsylvania. But when we look at what was happening under President Trump, we had record employment, we had low inflation, we had energy dominance and a secure border, and Putin respected us. We need America first leadership in Washington. We have to elect strong America first congressmen, senators, and in 2024, take back the White House to to once again be energy dominant and have America on the right track. We are not on the right track under the radical Biden administration. It's the most radical administration in my lifetime. And we have to have energy dominance. We have to secure our border. We have to take care of our people at home. I know we're all looking at Ukraine and we're worried about Ukraine. It's terrible and it's going to cost It's going to cause the cost of energy to go up, which is going to stoke inflation on top of these multi-trillion dollar bad bills that Biden's been passing. But as a matter of fact, we have to take care of those at home. Our folks are suffering. Our working families are really suffering under this administration. Already, it was a $5,000 tax on every family to have Biden in the office. It's going to go up. I think it was... uh, the Wall Street Journal that reported they we, think oil will go up to $153 talk, a barrel. Let's talk a little bit more about that. You mentioned that Pennsylvanians are now buying, are, they're using Russian oil to, to heat their homes. And I know that must be painful for you and others who support fracking. I mean, there's so much 
natural gas right underneath Pennsylvania. Um, but the vice president was recently asked why the U.S. is still buying more than 600,000 barrels of Russian oil a day. And here's her answer. Cutting off the oil and gas uh, part of the economy for Russia. Well, as you know, that on this issue, for example, we applaud Germany. Our allies have stood firm and unified in a way that many of the pundits didn't predict would happen um, to ensure that we are, we are unified in our approach to this issue. You know, sometimes, Ambassador, maybe she should just say, I don't know. I, I don't know the answer. We're working on it. That might be more refreshing and honest for the American public instead of whatever that was. It, usually when she's answering a question, it's gobbledygook. And I, most people I don't think can really understand. I know that I worked with NATO and the Pentagon to counter Russia and China while I was working for all of you as the U.S. ambassador. But we also worked to sell American gas and oil abroad to our allies. And they would complain that it's a few cents more a barrel than Russian oil. And I would tell them that's the price of freedom. Yeah. And I would call it freedom gas. Ambassador, want to get your uh, thoughts on this. Uh, NATO once again overnight rejecting Ukraine's call to establish a no-fly zone against Russia. Oddly, there are some who support this move still, like Congressman Adam Kinzinger, uh, tweeting that this is a good moment to renew my call for a no-fly zone at the invitation of the Ukraine government. I fear if this continues, we will have to intervene in a bigger way. Um, Congressman Kinzinger is a veteran. He really he knows what a no fly zone entails. And he, yet he sounds pretty casual about the prospects of a hot war with Russia, Ambassador. Right. And now Moldova areas in Moldova are also uh, going independent and calling. So so they're inviting Russian forces. And so this could actually grow. And we do not want to be pulled into a war in Europe. We have to secure our own border. We had over two point six million people last year, known and unknown, come through our border and record levels of drugs. We have to secure our country. We have to get the inflation under control, get our energy dominance back. And I know that we're all talking about this, this invasion in Ukraine and our hearts go out to these people. We're sending arms, mm -hmm. of course, but also aid. But we have to take care of the issues at home. And I think it's a distraction. And the hawks trying to get us into this war. Thank God President Trump was not part of that military industrial complex. We had record levels of peace under President Trump. He got us out of foreign wars. That's where we need to be. As the U.S., we do not need to be engaged in this issue. Just and support. Ambassador Sands and candidate Sands, we thank you today for your insight and your time. Appreciate you joining us. Thank you so much for having me. Our pleasure coming up.